what drew me to Solana specifically was like quite a few things. So for that, some of like the criteria I had was number one, the programming language that was used. And kind of fortunately, I was already becoming a Rust maxi. So almost like the, the, yeah, blockchains and ecosystems that I was looking into, I just wanted them to be Rust based. So that kind of like narrowed it down a lot. But also more importantly, I was very curious about the actual team behind it. Because again, if I'm saying that I want to shift my career into this particular angle, I don't want to just base that on like, you know, one individual in a room creating some kind of like meme coin or something. I actually wanted something that was like sustainable. And so then, yeah, researching on Solana and hearing about almost like where the founding team came from. And I was like, I mean, yes, we don't know where this technology is going to go, but if anybody knows what they're doing, guys from Dropbox, Qualcomm, all working on this thing, I think I can like align with them to a large extent. And I think probably the last point I had was, again, if this technology is going to form the backbone of our future, it has to be on a chain that's at least affordable. And I think the main reason why I came to that conclusion was the first NFT drop I was uh, a part of was from the developer DAO. And they were issuing out a free NFT on the Ethereum network, but to pay a hundred dollars. I'm like, I- yeah, yeah. I was like, oh I don't understand. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand how this this works when this thing is free, but I have to pay a hundred dollars just to transact in this network. And I thought, no, there must be another way, or there must be other chains that actually solve this problem. So actually, that's what made me go down the Solana path. 